Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot with you again with my guide to flying the P-63 King Cobra in Arcade. The three King Cobras are Tier 3 planes, with a current battle rating of 4.0. The one we're looking at here is the A-5. You can see it looks much like an Aero Cobra, the main external difference being the larger vertical stabiliser, which was needed to counteract the extra torque from the powerful engine used in this plane. The King Cobras never saw service with the US Army, they were built exclusively as Len Lease fighters for the Russians but arrived too late in the war to play any significant role in combat. So let's take a look at how these planes differ from each other. The A5 has a top speed of 676 km an hour at 7,500 meters, and its cannon has 30 rounds. The C5 model is slower, only a 649 km an hour top speed, but its cannon has 58 rounds. The A10 also has 58 rounds, but at a higher top speed of 724 km an hour, so that's the plane I'll be demonstrating in this video. Unfortunately, you need sunglasses to look at it. Many of these planes were painted uh, bright yellow for use as target drones after the war, and that's what you're seeing here. Fortunately, you can unlock a much cleaner looking polished metal skin after 150 kills. Looking at the armour, there's various hardened areas in front of and behind the pilot, but nothing to protect him from attack from above, the side or underneath. The engine which is positioned behind the pilot is protected from behind by another armoured plate. I'll switch to the internal components, which will quickly reveal the weak areas on this plane. There's the engine, which does tend to take damage fairly easily, but that's not the problem here. Look at the fuel tanks on the wings. Nice and wide, presenting a large and exposed target. In my experience, they catch a light very easily, and nine times out of ten it'll be the death of your plane when they do. The wings themselves are also fairly weak, so you've got to avoid exposing them to an enemy. OK, time to see how it handles. Its roll speed is average, no problems there. I'll bank the plane into a horizontal turn, using elevators only, and as usual I'm looking at the amount of speed it loses in the turn and whether it can catch its smoke trail, which will measure the strength of its elevators. Now it sheds its speed fairly quickly, dropping to 300 kilometers an hour before a full turn is completed. And it's not going to catch the smoke trail, which makes the elevators too weak for any kind of turn fighting. So I'm going into a climbing spiral using left rudder and up elevator, tapping the right roll key to keep the plane level. And this plane can spiral climb like an absolute champion. Its turn radius is fairly tight, and the sheer power of the engine gains the plane 1,300 metres in altitude before I exit this manoeuvre. It's still climbing strongly, at 150 km an hour, at which many planes would be flying horizontally, unable to climb at all. The superb engine is one real strength of this plane, and to demonstrate that I'll push it a bit further. Weps cooling down, I'm now at only 140 km an hour, at which the plane can no longer climb. I'm going to extend combat flaps, Add some, which adds some more lift to the wings, and we'll see how the plane responds when WEP comes back online. And look at it lift off like an absolute rocket from that very low speed base. The power of this plane, once you've researched engine injection, is really something else. And in this regard, for US prop planes, it's probably only second to the Bearcat. OK, enough of that. I'll move on to look at the plane's high speed handling. And for that, I'm going to put it into a vertical dive. I roll the plane as it gains speed to measure the effects of compression on the ailerons. It continues to roll quite fast, and is slowing a little past 500 km an hour, and its rudder response is still pretty good. I extend, I exceed uh, 750 km an hour in this dive, and still its speed indicator doesn't go into the red, which gives you an idea of how fast the plane can fly. At around 1,900 meters, I lift it up into a vertical zoom climb using WEP, and this will measure how well it retains the energy from the dive, along with again testing the power of its engine, and it'll tell me how much altitude I could expect to recover from a high-speed boom and zoom attack. Still travelling at 300 km an hour as I passed uh, 4,000 metres, indeed I take it right up to 4,800 metres before I hammer the head, hammerhead the plane using the rudder, and it handles very nicely in that hammerhead, no sloppiness at all, and I can easily level out nearly 3 kilometres above the low point of my dive, and this, my friends, is quite extraordinary for a 4.0 battle rating plane. There's one more thing I want to show you, and that's the accuracy of its 37mm cannon. I'll start with the stock level cannon. Watch how close the shot goes to the aiming reticle. Some are on target, some low, some spray to the left or right. They're just not quite straight each time. And when I fire a longer burst, they fly all over the place. That's just shocking, isn't it? Next I'll demonstrate it with a level 4 new cannon modification installed. The single shots are far more precise. Nearly every one of them is right on target there. And while there's still a lot of recoil spread in a sustained burst, it's definitely more tightly gripped 
than with the stock cannon. It does show though that longer bursts are only useful at extreme close ranges with this plane. OK, let's take it to battle, and this is footage from a battle in which my plane was at stock level, with no modifications researched at all. In this state the plane is not a great climber, and I'm keeping the speed fairly high as I climb to the side. When the plane's fully researched, it climbs best at around 230 to 250 km an hour, but when it's stock you're better off keeping the airspeed higher, as it lacks the engine power to climb well at lower speeds. And while the plane's climbing, I'd like to address a commonly expressed misconception, which is that there's no point trying to climb to altitude in a plane unless it's one of the top-notch climbers in the game. Indeed, the poorer climbers are almost not worth flying unless you're going to furball with them. It's simply untrue. By climbing to the side, I allow other people to merge with the enemy in the middle of the battlefield, which often sees enemy climbers shot down or dive off to chase targets, so by the time I arrive out there, I can often simply inherit control of mid to high altitude. And sometimes, as in this battle, I arrive in time to engage enemies who are preoccupied and don't see me coming. And that can make the difference in securing altitude supremacy for your team. As you can see, after two wet periods, I'm still only just passing uh, 3,500 metres. It doesn't mean I can't reach higher altitudes. It just means it's going to take me a bit longer to get there, that's all. The third wet will get me up around 4,000 metres, at which point I'll be looking to turn in toward the battle. Now I'm particularly interested at this point in a KI-45, who's been above me for some time, is now approaching, obviously no longer climbing. Indeed, as I watch, he went into a dive to attack someone. So I'm going to look to turn toward him if he zoom climbs. So now I'm just going to keep a close eye on all my surroundings and check down to see what he's doing. And indeed, he's coming up. And he's flying away from me. Almost certainly doesn't know I'm here. So I'm hitting wet to close the distance rapidly, then release it, zoom in, and place a carefully sniped shot, which takes him out. If I'd missed, I'd maybe fire one more snipe before getting to point-blank range and letting loose with a longer volley. Being patient, careful, and precise with your aiming is all important in this plane, as the vast majority of kills will come from the 37mm cannon. Yes, you do have 450 cal Brownings, but at the time I flew this plane, they were in a bad state, they're really not capable of inflicting much damage, so I pretty much ignored them. Anyway, the KF-45 pilot is back in a zero, and this time I'm diving in for a boom and zoom attack. I zoom in, snipe, miss, and then open up with a volley that crits his tail controls, and eventually sees him plummet to his death. And as luck would have it, there's two other climbers right in front of me, so I can continue on and kill each plane in turn. Taking care to zoom and carefully place each shot. And that's not bad for a stop plane. Notice though that not every shell was an instant kill. I hit that P-47 twice, the first shell exploding harmlessly as a dud, and this is what you can commonly expect with this cannon. Even the Russian 37mm shells on planes like the Yak-9T have duds like this, but their faster firing rate and tighter grouping makes it less obvious. Anyway, the zero I critted earlier dies as I line up a climbing lag, which I hit with a snipe. By the way, there's not much point trying to snipe at extremely long ranges with this plane, as the shells are on a timed fuse and will self-detonate at around 800 metres range. This next example shows the unreliability of the cannon, and there will be plenty more of examples during this video too. Now, it looks like another simple kill in the making here, I'm dropping in on a climbing plane from above and behind, but the 37mm sparks, I simply cannot drop him before he belatedly reacts to my presence and dodges away. And this is also the worst angle to attack from, directly behind a target, where you'll often miss or do no, no damage at all. But I did land two clean hits with nothing to show for it, whereas with 20mm cannon that plane would have been a smoking wreck. Moving right along, attacking bombers is a primary role for the King Cobra, as you'd expect from a fast plane with a high calibre cannon. You don't want to be sitting on their tail, you don't want to be exposed to their gunners, as they will set your wings alight. I found the f most effective method is attacking from either directly above or underneath. Especially with underneath, the bomber is encouraged to try and climb above you, which will stall his plane and make him unable to avoid you. Plus you have the full profile of his plane to aim at, in complete safe safety, assuming it's not a B-17. In this came I a case I failed to get the kill right away, but a rudder turn quickly gives me another shot before my stalled out target could escape. In this next example I'm trailing behind a G4M1, staying beneath him to deny his cannon rear gunner a shot at me, 
then I can lift up for a snipe. And in the same way I've also approached an SB2M, keeping quite low until I'm within range to lift up and again start sniping. And because I kept low I've got more than just the side profile of his plane to aim at, which lets me take off a wing. Next let's look at how it performs down at ground level. Occasionally you'll want to engage lower down, as simply, as sometimes that's simply where all the action is. Now I often see a lot of players turn fighting in King Cobras down here, and it's really not the best use of the plane. It isn't a great turn with its elevators, and banking the plane sideways exposes your fragile and flammable wings. I much prefer to keep my speed high, and conduct shallow dives to intercept targets. In this case I missed my first shot, so I'm going to extend away using WEP to ensure I'm well clear of the dogfight before I climb and look to engage again always checking above in case someone's diving on me before I begin my climb. As everyone's right down on the deck, I'm only going to climb to 1,500 metres, as I don't want to be travelling too fast on my attack run. And I'm forced to deal with this climbing F4, but I can't land a shot as he flies past at close range. I'm not going to turn after him, as I simply don't intend to turn fight, but instead I continue on to where a climbing KR61 is presenting as a very nice target. But despite landing a couple of shots, I'm again let down by dud cannon shells or hit registration sparks instead of ripping off his tail anyway. Indeed, the unreliability of the cannon will be a real test of your patience and discipline when you choose to, to use this plane at lower altitude, where targets are generally moving faster and dodging around, making it difficult to land shots in the first place, let alone getting hits and not being rewarded for them. In fact, I've lost patience here myself. I sat on his tail, jammed my cannon, and shot him down with 50 cals, even though I was in a kill train and heading directly toward oncoming coming enemies. And that's the effect unreliable weapons can have on you in a furball setting. You can find yourself taking risks that normally you'd never contemplate, no matter how disciplined you try to be. Here's another boom and zoom run on a BF-110. This time I simply can't connect at all, probably due more to the erratic shot spread on the cannon more than anything else. If you're thinking that low altitude combat in this plane looks like a nail pulling exercise in frustration, well you'd be right. On the occasions I've engaged at ground level I've nearly always come away with more assists than kills, but this is a pretty bad example of what it can be like. Anyway, I'm taking the opportunity to look around, which you should always do whenever you get a chance, and then I'm into a head on with a zero where again at least one shell hits with no reward. And then the same happens again attacking a P63. Now putting the cannon issues aside, the plane certainly flies very well as a high speed interceptor in furball situations like this. Even at stock level, which this plane was, as this is the same battle I showed earlier. I guess you can regard this as a worst case example. Most of the time you will get at least a few shells on target doing the expected damage, and you'll walk away with some kills instead of everything being an assist. So the golden rules for low altitude engagements. Keep your speed high, don't turn to chase someone, don't get fixated on a target, and as best you can, stay patient, keep calm, remember to zoom and aim as precisely as possible. So far the plane's performance at stock level looks pretty good, but the lack of acceleration is actually quite significant and can really get you into trouble. In this example a lowly SPD has spawned and I'm trying to fly away from him and I'm really struggling to do so. I'd expect to be out of range in a matter of seconds, but it simply isn't happening, and I'm reduced to dodging around to avoid his guns while I slowly creep away. And to make matters worse, soon a low-tier Hayabusa joins him. There he is there, and he's gaining on me. As the enemy team's capping the zone, I decide to turn and risk a head-on before running back to stop the cap. And as usual, I'm unable to land a shot, Head-ons are very dangerous in this plane because of the flammable wings. And now the Hayabusa is right on my tail. I simply could not fly away from him. So I had to go again into more dodging, and eventually I was forced to shallow dive, and only lost him once I entered a cloud bank. Now if low tier planes can cause me so much trouble, imagine the predicament if a higher tier plane starts to run me down. The KI-61 uh, Otsu is not exactly a high-tier plane, and that doesn't stop one from intercepting me here. 
I'm concentrating on setting up a kill on a TBF, and I simply don't see the 61 approaching until it's way too late. I finally spot him now, and because I'm so slow in that turn, I'm forced into a head-on. I miss my shots, but I assume he's also low on energy, so I try to climb over him, which was a terrible mistake. He set a fuel tank alight, and just like that, it's all over. I should have snap rolled and dived. In this Kalkan Gold battle, I've had time for a single boom and zoom attack at the start, and unfortunately I chose to extend to the side of the battle rather than toward my earth spawn. That got me isolated, and two planes lined me up and mercilessly chased me down. I went to ground level and dragged them a long way from the fighting, but they were intent on the kill and would not give up, and my stock level engines were simply too weak to outrun them. Eventually, the yak got nice and close. So I went into a spiral climb, hoping to force an overshoot, and then the LA-5 arrived, and my goose was cooked. I guess you can put this all, all of this down to stock syndrome, but the point is that you can't afford to be isolated in this plane before the engine's fully researched, either at low altitude or high, as its poor turning abilities and its flammable damage model put you at a massive disadvantage in a close quarters dogfight, and there are planes that are quite capable of running you down. When you do unlock engine injection, everything changes on this plane. Suddenly it has power to spare, and it starts performing like it did in the test flight. You can reach 4,000 metres from a 2,000 metre spawn in two wet periods, which is a fairly good climb rate, though not the best. But more importantly, you can continue to climb strongly right up to 7,000 metres, and probably further. Combined with the Cobra's amazing acceleration and high top speed, you are no longer sneaking around like on the edges, scavenging on planes that haven't noticed you. Now you're an alpha predator. And that lets you perform energy manoeuvres like the one I'm setting up here against an oncoming B7A2. I'm turning slowly toward him as I climb, so he's closing the range and thinks he's going to get a shot at me. Until suddenly, just outside of gun's range, he has to climb too steeply to get that shot. Now. And suddenly, he will be stalled. And it's child's play to rudder over and drop down for an easy kill. Could not have done that without the engine power that came from having the engine injection. I have some competition in this battle, as there was an enemy P-63 also at high altitude, but while I continued to climb, he decided to dive and attack a Stuka. And seeing this, I levelled out and accelerated to get above him. Now I'm watching to see if he's going to zoom climb. He loses some energy by turning back for a second pass at the Stuka. At this point, I expected him to probably dive away to the furball. Usually that's what happens when people start turning after diving. There he goes, turning again. So I'm starting to lower down myself to drop my cap altitude. And then I see that he's decided against diving away and he's finally beginning a zoom climb. And as soon as I see that, I'm going to dive straight at him, using the web to accelerate and close in as quickly as possible. He's lost speed and manoeuvrability. I have gained it. And now I have him on toast. Next is 109, who's tangling with a friendly BF-110. I watch their head-on pass, which the 109 survives, and now the 110 will probably be in serious trouble. Now I see the 109 turn back to engage, so I dive into intercept. Once again I'm in range very quickly. I catch him in the zoom climb where he's most vulnerable, and that's that. Cannon Ishaks are not a great high altitude plane, but you have to be very careful not to allow them to get a gun solution, either in a dogfight or in a head-on. Now this guy's preoccupied with a Junkers 88, but I'm climbing as I approach to make it hard for him to turn and just attack me. He will see me coming, and he breaks to my right. I fail to land a hit as he passes, so I immediately lift up into a zoom climb. turn back and look at him, and either he's going to give up and dive away, or he'll try and force the issue by climbing at me, probably hoping I'll give him a head-on, and yes, that's what he's doing. Now I'm in a shallow climbing spiral, trying to keep just out of his sights, while watching to see when he stalls. 
but I'm a little too cautious, which means I'm a bit too far away from him when he does stall. But I'm lucky enough to connect with a cannon shell as he tries to dive away. In all of these encounters, it's the engine power that's given me the advantage, both in keeping out of harm's way and closing quickly for the kill. On this occasion, I have a P-47 approaching me with a good amount of energy under his belt. Now, I'm using the same tac tactic that I did against the B-7A2, the steady climb while turning to let him approach, hoping to stall him out. But when he's about two kilometres away, I realise that I'm not going to get this guy to stall. So while I still have room to turn, I face him as if to accept the head-on and then snap roll away. And then I make a mistake. I make a climbing turn here instead of pulling a split S. Now while the climbing turn brings the nose around quickly it cost me a lot of speed whereas a split S would have gained it. And I can see the P7, uh, P47 pilot knows what he's doing. He's not trying to turn with me but he's running and climbing away. But I had more than enough power to run him down and eventually he was forced to dive away instead of being able to turn back for a head on. So what can you do once you have control of high altitude, apart from hunting bombers as I've already demonstrated? Well there is the simple boom and zoom attack of course, and this plane is brilliant at it. Usually in a vert vertical diving attack like this I don't bother even with a longer range snipe, I just get in close and then unload a burst of shells. And with the amount of power available to you, longer and deeper boom and zoom runs are possible. Here I dive on an IL-2 where the cannons fail me again, and then continue my attack against several other planes during a shallow zoom climb. Ok, I don't want to go head on with him. Simple snipe there. Another one here. High speed handling is great. I have no trouble getting guns on target at any stage, and I have tons of power left to get back to my former altitude. This one's quite interesting. I'd previously killed this player's KO-43 in a diving attack, so he knows I'm up here and he's trying to force his way up to altitude and engage me in a dogfight on level terms, and I'm simply not going to let that happen. I very nearly catch him out here, only scoring a hit instead of ripping off a wing. So up into a zoom climb I go, then turn to watch and see how he responds. Now he certainly hasn't given up yet, and now he'll be watching me. I'm waiting for him to start climbing again. I'm going to give him a few moments to lose his speed and hopefully lose track of where I am and then dive in for another try. There's simply no rush and I'm not going to dive straight in for a head on. Okay, let's give it a go. Nope, he's seen me approaching and he split us away, so I zoom climb immediately. It's very hard to boom and zoom an agile plane that's aware of you. You really need to catch them in a low energy state where they can't manoeuvre even if they want to, and that requires patience and subtlety. So once again I'm just going to hang around up here, rudder turning above him, waiting for him to climb up, waiting for him to think that I'm not paying attention. OK. Waited long enough, and now I have him stalled out right at the top of his climb. OK, time to wrap up. The strengths of the King Cobra. Strong climbing with great high altitude performance. It's high speed handling, it's high top speed and it's acceleration. Its weaknesses are its exposed and flammable fuel tanks, its fragile wings, its unreliable cannon, and its inaccuracy due to recoil. Once the injection is, uh, engine injection is researched, it's extremely effective as a high altitude interceptor, hunting both fighters and bombers. You want to use its speed and climbing ability to avoid equal dogfights or head-ons. Instead, you should look for boom and zoom attacks and use the power of the engine to rope a dope fighters. Bombers should be attacked from directly above or underneath to maximise the target area to aim at and reduce your exposure to their gunners. When firing, make sure you zoom in and lead ahead of the indicator placing a single shot until you're within about 300 metres, and then open up with a burst. Importantly, maintain your discipline. Don't take risks out of frustration with the cannon. 
Normally at this point I'd show a full battle with the plane, but that would make the video too long, so I'll upload it separately, and post a link in the description beneath when it's available. This is a great plane, and pretty much untouchable when flown to its strengths. If the cannon were more reliable, I'd say it was significantly under-tiered at 4.0. Even with the dodgy cannon, the Russian P-43 Premium at 3.3 battle rating is ridiculously under-tiered. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this video. Until the next one, good hunting, and I'll see you in the skies.